Someday, the fish on your dinner plate, kind of like this one or this one or this one, could come from a bioreactor rather than the ocean. So at first, it was really hard to generate investor interest in this kind of company. There's been like a wild rush of companies in the past few months. That was Mike Selden. He runs a startup in San Francisco called Finless Foods. They're trying to grow fish meat in a lab using stem cells. You've probably heard of startups replicating land-based meat in the lab. Think beef, pork, and chicken. But lab-grown salmon, tuna, and shellfish are also attracting serious attention from big-time investors. A couple years ago, there were no companies focusing on cultured seafood. Now a handful have cropped up, including Finless Foods, Blue Nalu, Wild Type, and Sea Future. Investors like Draper Associates and Spark Capital have backed these startups to the tune of about $12 million. Those funding rounds closed in 2018. In comparison, land-based meat companies have raked in at least $40 million by August 2018, according to PitchBook. Companies like Finless Foods say cultured fish could reduce overfishing and feed the world's growing demand for seafood. And fish is easier to grow in the lab than land-based meat. This is Chris Kerr, a venture capitalist. So just from a pure kind of execution standpoint, it seems like something that might be a little more attainable a little bit quicker. Um, so that was, that was relevant from, from, a, from kind of an uh, entry market standpoint. Growing fish in a lab remains super expensive. The companies are racing to see who can bring costs low enough to break into the more than $120 billion seafood market. The earliest you might get to try lab-grown fish is the end of next year. That's when Finless Foods wants to debut bluefin tuna in high-end restaurants, though it doesn't have any firm deals in place yet. The company made lab-grown carp cakes as a proof of concept last year. At the time, it cost the company $19,000 to produce one pound of fish. Finless has since brought the cost down to $6,000 per pound. Here they are holding a carp cake tasting in 2017. Hey, maybe talk a bit about it as you're eating it. Like, what do you think? Very tender like a fish. Delicate. It's very good. I'm kind of a little boring. It's like mashed potato. Other startups are focused on things like salmon, lobster, crab, and shrimp. Finless Foods started working on lab-grown fish in June 2016, about three years after lab-grown meat became a thing. Mark Post, a Dutch professor, is credited with launching the cultured meat movement with the world's first lab-grown beef patty in 2013. Growing fish tissue is pretty much uncharted territory. Tissue engineering techniques are more established for warm blood in mammals. That's because of research and investment in regenerative medicine to replace damaged tissue in the human body. And so we've, in a way, needed to invent fish cell biology. We've tried to take on, as advisors, anybody who knows anything about fish cell biology, all the experts in the world, there are very few of them. This is David Kaplan, a professor at Tufts who studies biomedical engineering. He says fish cells are much less understood than mammal cells. A lot more work needs to be done to get them ready for prime time. But replicating the texture of fish is easier than, say, a steak. Meat itself from animals is probably a higher bar because the density of the, of the muscle is, is, in principle, higher than you see in fish. So it's, it's, a, it's a more difficult challenge. That's why you could find cultured fish on the menu before you do meat. If and when lab-grown fish does hit the market, it could help make the seafood industry more sustainable by reducing our reliance on fishing. One third of the world's fish stocks are overfished, and that seriously disrupts ocean ecosystems, according to the UN. Fish consumption hit an all-time high in 2016, and the UN projects it will grow by 20% in the next 12 years. To grow fish in a lab, scientists isolate fish stem cells that can develop into the parts of the fish that people eat, muscle, fat, and connective tissue. The cells are fed a solution containing proteins that signal them to divide and generate more of themselves. Scientists then structure the tissue into the shape and texture of fish meat. Right now, the process is extremely expensive. Before the companies can put out a marketable product, scientists have to lower the cost of what they call the media. 
That's a very expensive soup made up of protein, salts, and sugars that the fish cells need to grow into tissue. The majority of media uses bovine serum, which comes from cow blood. That's one of the most expensive parts of the media. Scientists are trying to find a replacement for it. To get to market as fast as possible, Finless Foods is aiming for price parity with bluefin tuna, an expensive delicacy. The company calls this approach the Tesla model. Create something on a luxury market first, a really high quality, extremely good product that is on the expensive side. And just make sure that your brand is associated with that and then drop your costs and eventually end up serving a much larger group of people with that. And so while at first the race is really on who can get the price down the fastest while still retaining all the qualities of fish, after that point is going to be who can differentiate themselves into creating the most interesting, um, like healthful and delicious varieties of food.